Assalamu alaikum khawateen azraat. Wasim Hassan welcomes you to lecture number 29 of Marketing for Non-Profits MKT 728 at the Virtual University of Pakistan. The component of learning is going to be failure of new offerings. As the topic suggests, not every product that we offer on the market is a great success. There are chances that some of the products will fizzle out. Why does that happen? We're going to look into uh, the reasons for that. This basically is going to be a continuation of uh, the topic that we covered earlier in relation to new offerings. And you will recall that uh, whenever we talk about new offerings, there are um, two variables that we consider. One is the product, other is the market. And we also know that uh, we deal with either the existing product or we extend the existing product or we introduce a new product. And when we introduce new products, whether extended or absolutely whole new products, we deal with either similar market or a whole new market, which is dissimilar. And therefore, we can say that it is kind of an interaction between the product that we offer and the kind of market in which we operate. However, when we talk about things wrong with products in terms of their being successful, or uh, unsuccessful, it is not this particular interaction with which is to blame. It basically is a host of other factors with which are more fundamental in nature. And uh, that fundamental nature of factors lies in the strategic process about which I have talked about quite a bit. And uh, we all are very well familiar with that strategic process. It is not just uh, communications that uh, I covered as uh, the part of um, a few lectures uh, as something which we derive out of um, a very rational and logical strategic process. It has so many other different things because the process takes place at the organizational level of the organization. That is something that we have to keep in mind that uh, the organizational level, which deals with variables like the vision of the organization, the mission, um, the objectives, the values that the organization can holds very dear to itself. And then, of course, the strategic intent. In other words, the amount of resources and our ability to deploy those resources because when we introduce new products, because whether those products are an extension or those products happen to be whole new products, it is the amount of resources that we have at our disposal in terms of the financial resource, the human resource, that we think that it should be a good mix of the variables responsible to make the product a success. So in other words, if we have put together those variables very accurately and very rationally, then the chances are the product will be a success. If we have lapsed on so many different counts, then the chances are the product will not be a great success and the product might fail. So in other words, when we talk about these fundamental factors responsible for failure of new offerings, they happen to be exactly the same ones that are responsible for their success. So in other words, these factors, if employed rightly, very smartly, then they will make the new offering a success. If these factors are messed up, then the chances are the new offering will not be a great success. So it basically is not a question of whether we should get into an extended product or we should introduce a new product or we shouldn't really have introduced a new product because 
we did not have the expertise. Well, here, when we talk about the expertise, we can go back to the fundamental variables, which I was referring to. So it is the fundamental variables which basically are responsible that make a product either a success or a failure. What generally happens in the practical life is that uh, an administrator in an organization or the chief executive for that matter or somebody who happens to be uh, very strong on the operations side uh, has his way to introduce a new product without taking into consideration and I would say is serious consideration the strategic process and ignoring the variables of the strategic process out of which we fully and clearly understand what really are our strengths and what really is the sustainable competitive advantage that we are in a position to put together good and new products. So in other words, if we ignore those variables, the chances are the product is not going to make its way into the market. In addition to the inability of organizations to ignore the strategic process, there is one more factor that can be imputed toward failure of new offerings. And that is not having a good system and procedures for evaluating new ideas and concepts. There could be just one person within the organization or a committee comprising of a few individuals who have the expertise to look at new ideas, analyze those, and uh, then come up with uh, very solid recommendations on the basis of certain rationale and sound background instead of uh, having their uh, whims and fancies to decide upon uh, one new particular product. So this is the crux of the matter that uh, it is not the uh, fancy uh, of uh, the one manager or a couple of managers uh, within the organization that they would like to introduce a new offering to which they think should be very attractive. It is a question of having a system in place which should automatically signal to the organization that there are certain areas where potential lies for introducing a new product or a set of new products. There may be the potential signals toward just extending the existing product or it may signify introduction of a whole new product which in addition to the existing product will strengthen the service side of the organization. So um, we can say that uh, the organizations could have to have good systems in place whereby they can come up with uh, uh, new offerings in a systematic and rational way. Yet another factor responsible for a failure of new offerings is not carrying out the market research. Not subscribing to the factor of the market research, which I touched upon in detail earlier, is a suicidal approach toward introducing new offerings. Because we do not really have a good way of judging what really is the potential of the new offerings. As a matter of fact, if we have not carried out market research, we may make mistakes in terms of judging the segmental lines and then coming up with the right positioning for the product. And if we do not have accurate positioning of the product, we are not really highlighting the right points of differentiation. And if we lack on those two fronts, it really means that we are not carrying out the process of market planning the way it is due. Not having uh, the right positioning and uh, not having the ability to highlight uh, the points of differentiation very accurately automatically means that uh, when we're going to end up with communications which are kind of wavered and they're not directed and very well focused toward the target market. And the whole effort uh, will come to uh, kind of a flop if uh, we have a mix of all these disasters. So these are the kind of things that we have to keep in mind while we are planning for, for the new product. Yet another factor could be that we're not in a position to forecast the projections of how well the new offering will be acceptable in the marketplace. And because of the lack of good forecasts, we do not really have in place the right budgets 
This takes us back to the importance of the factor that we have to have right forecasts and proper budgeting so that we can put all that before the board of directors and especially before those stakeholders who are instrumental in generating funds for the organization who are very important toward playing an important role uh, not only towards funding, but also towards advocacy and also towards uh, having more and more activists um, at attracted uh, toward the cause. So everything is related with um, the other important uh, strategic variable and uh, it requires that we look at the development of new offerings in a holistic way, where uh, all the dimensions of uh, not just the organizational level, but also the level that deals with uh, the, the marketing side is taken care of. And the fact of the matter is that uh, the side that deals with marketing also happens to be part of the organizational level. The only difference is that the top management is the one that deals with things like vision, mission, objectives, and uh, the values and so on and so forth. Whereas when it comes to market planning and forecasts and budgeting and uh, the ability to properly position the product and differentiate uh, it from the rest of the crowd and then uh, putting all the variables together so that uh, we can really um, publicize it uh, in a very, very well focused way is the job that falls within the domain of marketing. That is something that we all know and uh, it's not something that has to be uh, further emphasized. But the fact is that uh, all these factors could have to be taken into very uh, serious uh, consideration. Another factor that is responsible for uh, the failure of uh, new offerings is that uh, competition it becomes very active in the process and they also come up with something that is either uh, very similar to what we have introduced or uh, maybe they have uh, faced uh, the challenges of uh, uh, marketing uh, mix variables in a more uh, professional way. Uh, maybe they've had uh, access to uh, the more funding and uh, they have carried out a very aggressive advertising and promotional campaign or uh, they have uh, taken into uh, a better consideration the factor of distribution and so on and so forth. So the, these are the kind of variables or factors that uh, we are familiar with uh, in relation to commercial marketing as well. So these are the kind of things that uh, one has to uh, keep uh, in a very um, sharp focus just to make sure that uh, we remain very alert, not only about introducing the product by taking into consideration all the strategic variables of the whole process, but also uh, should know uh, what is happening in the overall marketplace. Uh, our market intelligence systems uh, should be uh, they're very active and we must know uh, what is going on around us. And uh, once uh, we have an idea of uh, what competition is doing, we certainly are in a better position to make some fixes to the process that we are following. Uh, maybe uh, we decide at the spur of the moment that uh, the product further need, needs to be improvised because competition uh, seems to be uh, working on uh, the same features. Now, if the market intelligence pinpoints that, then certainly something has to be done in order to stay ahead of competition. Yet another factor which happens to be extremely important and that really causes the difference between what is success and what could be failure is a drift from the mission of the organization. This is something which again takes us back into the organization level and we have to pay a lot of attention to the fact that uh, the over mission has got to be crystal clear. We've got to express in very clear terms to everybody that uh, this is what we are supposed to be doing and this is what we do and this is how we do. And uh, then we need to ensure that the target market fully understands in absolute and same clarity uh, the objectives of the organization, the way that we have tried to put them together and then uh, convey those by way of having that mission statement. So in other words, it is uh, something which reflects what we, what we do and it reflects our strategic objectives 
and strategic objectives are a reflection of the purpose of the organization. And all these things have got to be communicated very clearly as part of the mission statement. And what happens is there is a drift from this mission statement. Now, you may get surprised, or I would say a question can, must be flashing into your minds because why an organization should drift uh, from its original mission. You know what happens is that at times a certain amount of funding is available from a certain foundation or a governmental agency that would give you funds only if you operate in a certain area. Now that certain area may be different from what you have been doing or what really is the mission of the organization. So in other words, your organization can be lured into getting that funding and only because you can lay your hands on those particular funds, you start drifting from the original mission of the organization. And that's what they call uh, the mission drift or the mission creep. It becomes extremely difficult for the, the management team and also for the workers at the lower levels and also for the activists to start working on something which is different from what they're used to. Don't forget that they have been the part of a culture, which is a reflection of what has been going on within the organization for a number of years, if the organization happens to be an established organization. Now, given that fact, the people are accustomed to working under certain uh, the systems and procedures, and uh, they have a certain set of um, orientations uh, to follow those systems and procedures, and there are certain values which drive uh, all the team members toward uh, achievement of objectives and goals, and all of a sudden, the, uh, the mission drift takes place and the organization starts working on something which may uh, happen to be similar or which may happen to be um, something which uh, uh, has the elements of extension of your uh, existing product. But the fact remains, uh, it is uh, a mission uh, change and which means it certainly causes some uh, changes in your objectives and it certainly creates a situation in which there is no link between your existing product and the new product or the new program. The key here is that the mission drift or the mission creep causes a lot of changes in the culture. And uh, if the culture of the organization is basically shaken, it changes the values of the organization, the people are not mentally prepared to accept that, they're not receptive and they are uh, they're not used to the, the working for something which is drastically different. Only because uh, the organization has had access to the new funds, a new program which is miles and miles away, and which has no links with the existing product or the existing market, certainly is not going to make people motivated to keep working for a new program. So if at all the organization has to work for the new program, it requires a certain uh, very important and fundamental changes and realignments along the strategic process, which starts from the mission of the organization and flows all the way down. And then they have to judge where exactly are their competitive advantages. And if the organization uh, ends up uh, realizing that it doesn't really have a competitive advantage, I don't really think it makes any sense for the organization to continue for that particular program, which is so much different, only because they have drifted from the original mission. In case they are in a position to bring about the certain changes which are still compatible with their core competencies and they have the resources to follow the new program, particularly in terms of the human resources, then it does make sense for the organization to start working in the new program but with a new vigor and the new foundations which requires new challenges to be met and which is tantamount to starting a new life altogether. Let me take you back to the example of PSRD. We know they have so many different products, but the fact is that all those products fit very well into the mission of the organization. I mean, if they have orthopedics on one hand, 
On the other, they have things like computer training and um, tailoring and stretching and uh, having people uh, to make paper bags and so on and so forth so that they can uh, be readied for taking up um, occupations of their own. But the fact remains, they're working for the same uh, target market. They're working for the same uh, population. They're working for the same objective. The objective still remains uh, improvement of the lot of the disabled. People who come to the hospital for treatment, they are treated, they recover from the treatment, they try to get back to the mainstream of their normal life and uh, toward taking up activities of their normal life, the organization or the hospital offers so many different products which are all meant for the same population, whether it is developing their uh, skills uh, in areas which are not medical and uh, offering them uh, financial assistance also. That's one of the products that uh, the society offers to um, have their uh, uh, ex-patients start something and to get back into the mainstream of life by taking up a particular occupation. And uh, there are examples, there are success stories which you can find out if you go to the website of that particular society that uh, the people have taken loans, they pay those loans back and they follow certain occupations. But the fact here is that uh, all these products offered by the hospital or the society have a perfect fit with the mission of the organization because they have a lot of links and those links connect all those products together. And the common denominator is the target market. So the fact is, if you remain within the target market, even if you introduce products which are dissimilar and you cater for the needs of the uh, existing uh, target market, you have a great chance to succeed. So in other words, it is the mission fit which makes your products uh, succeed and it is the mission drift which may make your products fail. So this is all about the factors that are responsible for failure of new offerings. And with this, could we come to uh, a finish uh, for this particular component. This component is about process for developing new offers. As the topic suggests, okay, we have to have a very systematic process okay, which must be initiated by the top management in order to introduce new products. This is not something which is taken by chance, and this is not something like I already have said, which should be um, the brainchild of uh, the certain uh, fanciful uh, thought processes. It is not that. It has to be systematic, it has to be very rational, and it has to have a professional background. It has to be an outgrowth of a strategic process, which must be initiated by the top management. That is a statement that I've made. Now, before we understand what really are the steps that we follow in order to take up this process and then implement it through all those stages, we have to understand why is there a need for the organizations to introduce new products. There are two major reasons. The one is that the organizations find themselves at the end of a program, meaning they find themselves in the terminal years of a certain program. Let me give you examples from the area of uh, family planning and uh, the polio campaigns, and for example, um, in countries where uh, organizations could have dealt very effectively with the uh, problems and uh, they have succeeded in uh, implementing the whole program and now they see no further potential for that program to go on in those particular countries. They have to extend the market. In other words, if they are working in country X, where they have finished the job, they have to move to country Y. So this is extension of the same product, meaning the existing product in a market which could be dissimilar, but with the expertise of facing the challenges of realigning all the variables of marketing mix. This goes without saying. So the one reason is this uh, situation of being in the terminal years of a certain program. The other reason is that uh, the organizations are uh, pretty well set in a certain market and uh, they may not happen to be the uh, multinational NPOs or NGOs for that matter. They, they may be local organizations, but they want to stay on top. 
And you know from one of the previous lectures that in order to sustain themselves, they have to keep doing new things. They have to add new features to their existing products and they have to introduce new products which could, could be wholly new. And uh, they may have to move to the markets which are not similar. Um, you know, the buyers still, of course, maintaining the links between their existing products and the new markets and the new products and so on and so forth. But here the objective is very different. The objective is not that of the final years of a program. The objective is to add to the uh, financial and service strength of the organization. Um, if they carry out uh, new features of an existing product or, or they offer new products, they can uh, add to the uh, product line and by offering the newer programs, which if implemented uh, very professionally, uh, they offer the organization a great opportunity of adding to the financial resource. And uh, that sets the ball rolling for so many different things, which could be very strategic in nature. One being lesser and lesser dependence on outside funding. I think this is achievement of a huge objective with which organizations can set to themselves and then start working on those by way of introducing new products with which have a lot of potential to succeed in the marketplace. And if they have to set the process right in terms of all the strategic underpinnings, then the organizations can succeed. And if they succeed, they, of course, can have a great strength in terms of finances and also their services. People will take them more seriously. Not only their target market, but also their potential partners. If we go back to the example of the joining hands with a commercial entity, just in order to get into a cause marketing relationship, I think the NPO has a great opportunity to do that because it has a tangible evidence of having been successful in the marketplace uh, after developing and offering new uh, products and making them successful and uh, the gen then joining hands, um, staying very well within the mission, of course, with a commercial entity and doing things to the benefit of uh, the society and uh, in, a, in a great way, in a way that uh, offers them uh, so many different um, financial benefits. In addition to other uh, service benefits. Now, if we take a very close look at uh, these two objectives, could we realize that uh, in terms of the former, which is about the terminal years of a program, I repeat, the organization has to have a new focus and altogether new direction, or in other words, a redirection in terms of a new program. And this is what I was talking about uh, when I discussed the mission drift. The new focus and the redirection are going to set a whole new course for the organization. It is challenging and it is not going to be easy, but then this is not to say that, that the organization should not follow it only because uh, it may think that it may fail. Uh, actually, the organization has to fulfill all the uh, premises and basic principles of the st strategic process in order to be prepared uh, for that eventuality and for achievement of that particular objective. In case of the latter, which is adding a new product only because the organization wants to have financial strength and it wants to have service strength in the marketplace, the focus is going to be new, no question about that, but it is going to have a very strong link with the existing product or with the existing market. And doing that, I think it goes without saying that the organization can really play up its credibility in terms of its resources and in terms of its core competencies because the target market and all the stakeholders fully are convinced that the organization has the ability to succeed while it takes challenges head on because it undertakes those challenges and then the works for implementation of the programs by way of following um, a very uh, well thought through and put together um, program uh, of implementation. Having said uh, all this, could we now get on to the steps that are involved in following this particular systematic process of introducing new products. 
how does the thinking come to the surface that, uh, that we should have uh, a new product? I think uh, some of the, the variables or some of the factors th that I'm going to talk about are very common sensible and uh, they have their uh, the roots uh, very well into the principles of uh, the basic marketing management. First of all, the organization has to uh, listen very carefully to the voice of their staff members and people who work for the organization uh, because they are the ones who have been working for the programs uh, for a number of years. They are the ones uh, who are part of the whole culture. They are the ones who have made your programs successful. And they are the ones who deal with uh, the client, meaning the ultimate uh, client of the organization. And they are the ones who understand their needs and their problems. If uh, we are convinced that uh, the marketing is all about uh, the needs of the ultimate client or the consumer, then we have to uh, listen to those. We have to be sensitive uh, to their pulse and then transmit all that to the top management that this is the way the market uh, feels, this is the way uh, the market thinks, and uh, this is the way that we should uh, go ahead with the, the certain improvements of our existing products. If the opportunity presents itself to introduce a new product, so be it, because uh, it basically stems from the wishes of the employees and staff members of the organization who are dealing with our uh, clients. And uh, as long as it also has a strong link with uh, what is being done within the organization already, I think it makes all the more sense to go ahead with that new product as long as we think it really fits into the mission and also we have the core competencies to follow the program. The other variable that we have to keep in mind is customers and clients. So in addition to employees and staff, we also solicit our customers um, in terms of uh, the, their needs and their problems. We know that uh, employees and staff members of the organization can be very helpful in uh, identifying new opportunities for the organization because they are the ones who are dealing with the ultimate client or the customer of the organization. How about talking directly with those customers? I think it makes all the more sense. So the talking with customers and clients is another variable which just cannot be ignored because they talk with the organization directly in terms of their needs and their problems. And uh, having um, taken a stock of uh, those needs and problems, the organization definitely is in a position to identify the right opportunity, whether it is an extension or a new product. Another factor uh, which uh, must not be ignored is uh, the conferences and seminars which employees and staff members of the organizations should attend. Now, these conferences could be at the national level and could be the ones held at the international stage. Whatever is the case, depending upon the affordability factor in terms of a particular organization, people have got to be sent to these seminars and conferences because in such conferences, they always talk about the latest developments. They share their experiences. And we know that knowledge is a shared asset. So, it, you know, when people talk about different experiences in terms of different products that they are dealing with in their respective markets or in their respective programs, it always lays the ground for everyone to learn. And after having learned from such seminars and conferences, employees feel more confident about the initiatives that they may have been thinking about because they heard about it, they read it somewhere. Uh, they uh, had just a feeling of uh, that particular initiative, but after having attended the conference or a seminar at the international level, the amount of confidence they have now is something which is compounded. And therefore, uh, organizations can, must keep in uh, mind this serious consideration of uh, picking uh, smart employees and uh, nominating them. Uh, for uh, attendance of uh, good conferences and seminars. Yet another factor that uh, is uh, very important toward uh, the process. NPOs could have to have a very keen eye on uh, what similar organizations are doing and 
in order to know that, they have uh, to look at their websites and uh, go through the content and then establish how well the content is being managed by similar organizations. That will give them a lot of insights into what others are doing. And this is one of the good ways of staying on top of things if you are competitive and if you think that you have to have your website better than others. You must be in touch with the common donors and know what they are doing for organizations that are similar to yours because there are donors who donate to not just your organization but also to others. And uh, we know from uh, the market research side uh, what really is it that motivates different donors to donate. And uh, given uh, all that information and armed with uh, that particular understanding that we can always talk with donors uh, to establish certain important facts as to what exactly similar organizations are doing in terms of generating funds. Uh, that is uh, a very good way of uh, staying right on top of things. Organizations could have to go through newspapers and scan important news in terms of uh, the similar sector they are operating in uh, because uh, that is how uh, they will know uh, what um, foundations and governmental agencies are doing and uh, what is it that may affect them in future and uh, what is it that could be really helpful and uh, how well they should put together their moves in order to uh, come to grips with the upcoming challenges. And they should also interact with uh, members of uh, those uh, organizations, meaning staff members. Uh, you know, you people get in touch with each other in the marketplace. I was talking about these uh, seminars and conferences, and the fact of the matter is that uh, one of the dimensions of uh, attending conferences is that uh, you interact with uh, the staff members of uh, your competitors and those organizations that happen to be very similar to yours uh, in the process, knowing what is happening in the world in, in, in very simple words. And therefore, uh, you should not uh, leave anything undone or leave any stone unturned in order to uh, reveal what exactly others are doing. As staying put at your organization and not trying to unearth what others are doing is uh, not a good recipe for introducing new products. Another factor that organizations have to follow is that of grant givers or grant makers. In other words, nonprofit organizations have to stay in very close touch with the grant makers who happen to be governmental agencies or foundations of different kinds. As long as we know the amount of grants and the kind of new grants which are on the way for similar programs or even dissimilar programs, we are in a position to generate better ideas for introducing new products. So therefore, uh, the factor of grant makers happens to be another important one uh, toward generation of ideas. Uh, one more uh, thing that uh, we have to keep in mind for uh, grant makers is the factor of uh, RFP. This is an abbreviation that uh, is very common among uh, the governmental agencies and also foundations, and this is something which the grant makers advertise in the papers or on the website. It basically means request for proposal, and that stands for RFP. You have to submit a proposal for that particular grant which you think you should get, and that is why it is known as the request for proposal because the request is launched by the grant giver, and the proposal is given by the organization that seeks you know, those funds. This is um, a the very important dimension of uh, the supply chain. And those of you who are familiar with uh, the, the supply chain mechanism uh, know pretty well that uh, RFP happens to be a very important um, stage uh, where uh, organizations prepare uh, their uh, proposals and submit for seeking grants. The um, conditionalities are uh, the part of the um, advertisement which is launched by the grant giver 
and uh, you have to do a lot of the homework in order to answer so many different questions and in order to make sure that you um, submit your proposal within the parameters as defined by the RFP. And these are the kind of things which you must have learned from the supply chain mechanism. And uh, the fact here remains that uh, scanning of the RFPs happens to be a very important job on part of the organizations who are seeking funds all the time. These are some of the factors which uh, are uh, uh, a good basis for generating an idea for a new product. The strategic process just starts from generating an idea and it goes further on. There are so many different steps that are to be undertaken after this and I'm going to talk about those. But before that, let me summarize this particular factor of idea generation. The top management has got to be committed to the new idea and not just the top management, but when they start talking about the new idea where the other members of the organization everyone has to give their commitment toward the new idea. Because when they, they, when they give their commitment, it means all believe in the new idea. And the ones, you know, they have this commitment in place, they set the ball rolling for the uh, subsequent steps of the strategic process of which, uh, uh, you know, seeing that uh, compatible um, resources and core competencies uh, are available to make this program uh, a success, then all is well with the organization and all is well with this particular step. When we talk about uh, commitment, it is not just a verbal commitment. It is not just to see an emotional outburst on part of members of the organization. Yes, we are going to do it and we are going to follow it. That's all very well. No question about it. That adds vigor to the implementation of the mission of the organization, but then the organization also has to have resources. And that's where we go back to the strategic process uh, which takes place at the organizational level, which means which starts from the top management and rather from the board of directors who have to ensure that the organization does have the resources to uh, get follow the new product or the new program. So because once because we are done with the identification of uh, the uh, the program, because we are on to the stage of uh, screening out ideas. Because uh, the reason we screen out ideas, we generate not just one idea, we may generate more than one idea. And in that situation, we have to see to it what exactly is the most optimal and the most promising one. Let me give you an example of um, a generalized kind of a program. May that be from a hospital or may that be from a university offering uh, a particular course. Now, before offering a particular course, uh, the university has to go through the process of whether it should be offered uh, within the same area it is dealing in, like IT or business administration, for example, or they have to offer a course in the area of engineering because eventually they would also like to add a school of engineering you know, to the university. So these are the kind of uh, considerations that um, face or rather should face uh, any the management before they screen out the ideas. And when it comes to screening out, there are two terminologies that we have to keep in mind. The one is the drop error and the other one the author calls the go error. A drop error can occur when an organization in its oversight drops a good idea because it did not fully understand or fully um, analyze its uh, dimensions and uh, in a hurry, it dropped that uh, good option. Go error is the one uh, by again having an oversight of uh, a particular uh, the program or an opportunity, the organization let a bad program go through the process. And uh, after having gone through the process, the organization has started following that particular uh, the opportunity as a result of a go error. So we have to keep in mind these two factors and we must not make you know, this kind of a mistake. In other words, we have to be very conscious and very sensitive to the fact that uh, any opportunity that we pick has to be the right opportunity. So the question here is, who's the one who's going to make the decision that this is the right opportunity? For that, the organization has to assign this particular job to either one particular individual or a group of individuals forming a committee 
that makes uh, decisions on screening good ideas, or rather screening ideas. And they are the ones you know, who should make the final decision about uh, which are uh, you know, the good ideas. And the good, uh, good ideas uh, should not be more than, I would say, two or three at the most. Because um, it is not really easy to have so many different ideas for so many different products. But you have to keep everything in a sharp focus. And therefore, uh, the keeping your options in terms of uh, opportunities, the committee should come up with uh, the screening process and the final couple of opportunities and leave the decision with the top management or the board of directors to select just uh, the one of those. And uh, the ones, you know, that the final one is uh, decided upon, the organization, of course, starts with the working on that. And uh, the question here again arises, whether who should be the people forming that committee if uh, people are going to be more than one? Well, uh, it goes without saying that people forming the committee has to be people from the top management and uh, they should have knowledge of things like uh, how to make investments. Uh, they should also be exposed to divestments. And for example, uh, the programs uh, which uh, were not successful in the in the past, and they also wrapped up those programs, and then you see got back into the mainstream of those programs, which were successful, and still you know took the organization forward. So this is um, uh, a, a great exposure, which not everyone has, and these people should also be exposed to all the operational dimensions of the organization in terms of uh, the marketing and uh, the supply chain, uh, the mechanisms, and uh, operations and so on and so forth. So in other words, the people from different uh, disciplines of the organization should form this committee so that there is no oversight, there is no drop adder, or there is no go adder. Let me give you a couple of examples, rather very specific examples of what the committee should ask themselves. And uh, the questions which should pop up uh, they should be like, uh, are we going to have uh, the better reachability in terms of uh, the reaching our target market? And if that is so, is it going to add to our financial and service strength? Do we have the management resource to undertake all that? Meaning, is it going to be the existing management team which is good enough to undertake this challenge as well? Or shall we have to employ the more people? And if it comes to employing the more people, are they going to be in the areas which are already being undertaken by our management and there are no going to be hiccups in terms of um, the execution of the program because they're going to be trained very well by the existing management? Or are they going to need training uh, you know, for disciplines which are outside the domain of our organization? And they should look into things like, to what extent this new opportunity is going to assure more and better funding for the organization. As we know very well that uh, the funding is the prime a problem that any organization in this world faces, that we have to look into this particular factor of our ability, possible ability to generate more funds. And the committee also has to look into things like the links, you know, which can be developed between the product that is being offered already and the product of the program which is being considered. What are those links and what are going to be the implications of those links in the light of all that? Uh, that we have learned so far. So these uh, factors or variables, uh, the ones considered uh, in uh, a comprehensive form, uh, do form the basis of uh, screening out uh, the products or, or other opportunities uh, which uh, may not be uh, very highly promising, ending up with the one which is the most promising and uh, the one which the organization must follow because it is the consensus of the committee. And after the committee has done that, it is supposed to come up with a brief. The brief has got to be a strategic outline and that outline must narrate in clarity what exactly is the opportunity and the way it looks like, what is going to be the new form of the product and what is going to be its reason for being and what is uh, going to be the benefit uh, to the organization for the board of directors to ratify and, and, and approve the uh, possibility or the recommendation of the committee. 
And these, in other words, are uh, the two important factors uh, which uh, I've talked about in terms of uh, product development uh, in a nonprofit uh, context. And these are, I would say, generating new ideas and then screening ideas. These two factors are part of the component that uh, I'm finishing. And uh, these happen to be, in a way, a subset of the overall concept of uh, the process of product development. So let us keep this particular component to these two factors in order to have a better and clearer understanding of the remaining steps, which I think you know, would be more comprehensible if talked about as a separate component. But the process of developing new offerings will continue. Thanks.